In this video, we are going to look at a three-dimensional structure of cyclohexane. So here you can see we have our six carbons in a ring, and if we're looking at it from above, everything looks like it's in the same plane. Now, if we shift our angle slightly, you can see that that is not true. Some carbons are kind of pointing up, some are pointing down, um, and they alternate. So they're going up, down, up, down. Now, additionally, if we look at it from another angle, you can see that on every alternating carbon, there are bonds pointing straight up, and down below it's the same as well. There are bonds pointing straight down, so there's one back there as well. So each of the bonds pointing straight up are axial, and then you'll also notice that there are some pointing kind of off to the side at an angle, whether they're down or up. So those are our equatorial positions going around the ring. All right, and so I encourage you to consult your notes on chair configurations, um, just so you can kind of piece together how this relates to our drawings. So if we look at this more from the side, you can see we have our two parallel lines in the middle, and then a triangle pointing up and a triangle pointing down. Or you can even flip this. So when we talked about chair flips, we said that axial would become equatorial and equatorial would become axial. So let's look at a chair flip. All right, so this is our chair flip. Um, oh, and I actually should position this a little differently. We're gonna make this our front carbon here. Okay, and we're gonna put this side by side. So I kind of ran out of hydrogen bonds, so <laughs> some of these carbons are missing some bonds. But if we do a chair flip, this front carbon will become the back carbon. So you can see that over here. This front carbon moved to the back, and this blue axial bond became equatorial. It's still pointing up in both cases, but we went from axial to equatorial. And then this equatorial red bond became axial. So let me just move that slightly so you can see it's still pointing down, but now it is axial instead of equatorial. So basically what happened is when we did the chair flip, this carbon that's pointing up became a carbon that's pointing down. So it kind of moved positions a little bit. All right, so now let's talk about 1,3 diaxial interactions. So going back to our original structure here, we have our blue atom, which is representing a larger substituent pointing up and it's axial. But you can see that there's also these two hydrogens that are pointing up as well. Now, this isn't as large as a methyl group. Let's say this is a methyl group. You can see that these three hydrogens on the methyl group, they're really poking out and they can almost hit the other hydrogens. So that creates instability because we really want electron groups to be as far apart as possible. We don't want them running into other groups. So it's actually more favorable for a substituent to be equatorial. So let's replace this blue bond that's equatorial with our methyl group. And you can see it's just hanging out on its own and it has its own space. Uh, it has more space to rotate freely and do whatever it wants. And it's not running into any other electron groups. So uh, an equatorial substituent will be much more stable than an axial substituent. And that's because we're avoiding these 1,3 diaxial interactions. So these chair flips can occur naturally with cyclohexane. Uh, there is some energy involved, but if you can 
um, create a more stable conformation, then of course we're going to, to do that. So we'll talk more about that in the future and how that affects reactions with other molecules. But hopefully this gave you a better idea of how the three-dimensional structure looks compared to our two-dimensional drawings. And again, I do highly encourage you to get a molecular modeling kit. Uh, again, you can find them used online or you can buy them new from the bookstore or Amazon or wherever you wanna purchase it. Um, but this will help you visualize how molecules look and it's going to help a lot in the future. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.